Hi everybody, it's Mark Messier, and you're listening to Blue Shirt Underground Show, the number one Rangers podcast. Make sure you tune in to find out all the latest news. Let's go Rangers! Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Blue Shirt Underground Show with Jim and Eddie. Today is Tuesday. It is November 26th, or if you prefer, it is Thanksgiving Eve Eve. My name is Jim, and as always, I'm joined on the other side of the window by the one and only Edward Geik. Eddie, good evening. How are you, sir? Doing well, man. <laughs> Doing very good. Two days till I eat like a maniac. Gavone and uh, massacre some food and ingest it and eat that pizza, <laughs> consume that pizza. Ready and- to consume the pizza. Ready to consume the pizza. We are ready for Papa John's. I'm ecstatic. (laughs) After the last two games, the viewing party, I'm still riding high, Jim. So uh, to sum it up all, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Now, are you you cooking for Thanksgiving or are you traveling? I'm traveling. uh, Going visiting. my, uh, My lovely cousin Maria will be cooking up. Uh, a storm Maria. in. Uh, I'll be in uh, Howard Beach, close to Howard Beach, over there. Uh, on, I won't tell you the address because some of you clubs will show up. <laughs> but uh, we'll be over in that area, uh, just having uh, a good old time and the friends, family, and food and football. The four F's. The- Can't beat it. Can't beat it. Then Friday is the big Black Friday game against Boston, right? Right. Oh, it'll the, be uh, Black Friday, all right. The, the Black Friday extravaganza. Uh, goals. <laughs> Everyone's going to get a goal for the That's what you want from those black players. Absolutely. That's right. Thank you, Sam. Oh, oh. black players. I still got to get that. This is what they call back hockey. <laughs> I still have that. Uh, I'll get it. Because, like, Colin Cook failed me on that one. <clears throat> but they so, had, sorry. W- w- I just where would you like to begin? We've got uh, two come from behind wins. We've got the viewing party. We could start there. We could start with. I mean, it's let's start with the viewing party because that's the little we were talking about. That I have to say, this viewing party was insane. <laughs> bedlam. It was bedlam. Like I, first of all, it was even. It started very slowly. It was, it, it was about like six o'clock, six thirty, and you know we get tremendous turnouts for these things, and right. it was looking like, well, maybe people aren't interested as we thought. Like, uh, look right? At, look around the bar. The numbers were down. I was getting worried. Jen said, you know, she saw me. She's pacing the floor as I do, worried who's showing up. I, yeah, you know, like, do I have to go out on the street and start dragging people in here? Uh, uh-huh. I go to gym, but you talk to these people. You say anything, and 
John Slattery's hovering behind me with a shillelagh, getting ready to whack me, you know, free the beast across the back of my head. Got the up, upper room there, and we got nobody showing up. What's going on? I'm going, this is, uh, you know, this is like year one right. attendance. Uh, I thought maybe uh, there were some people from other podcasts directing our people to other destinations saying, right, oh, them- they moved it. They moved it. <laughs> taking them down to the Hooters down the street there for 20 yeah. bucks to throw. Yeah. I mean, the Costa wasn't there. The Johnards weren't there. We were sounding the alarm for Costa. I mean, we called Bellevue to see if he finally got admitted. <laughs> we don't know what was going called on. Called Overbrook. Every mental institution we could think of. And, and, then, then, all- and, then, and then he comes up the stairs. Yep. And there he was. Glory. And, and then the Johnards showed you yeah, a lot of late arrivals, but. Then by, all by, of a sudden, by, the was packed. Right. By puck drop, we had our usual, we had all our regulars and, and, and then some. And uh, I don't know, we clocked in between around 40, between 40 and 50 people. Not bad. Oh, that was <laughs> terrific. Plus, there were the loud. It was so loud. Like, it's so. It was. Just very involved in the game until the game actually the game. started. <laughs> until the game started. I got hit with more proposed trades. What do you think of this trade? What do you think of this trade? I just don't want to trade. I don't want to. And, and listen. I love all you guys, but some people are coming up with a ridiculous trade. <laughs> Looking into later. Let me uh, let me just say real quick, my my dear friend down in Florida, John Prestano, is here in the chat room. Happy birthday, Johnny! Many many more. I love you. We miss you, and we'll see you as soon as we can. I hope all is well, my friend. Johnny Prestano. All the best, John the Baker. Happy big time, big time Mets, Rangers, and Jets fan, Eddie. Right up your alley. Oh, wow. Years of suffering this man has had through sports. Yes, yes. So happy birthday. You deserve it. Absolutely. I mean, all your teams are on a roll right now. Yeah. The Mets are hot with their new manager. Oh, God. And <laughs> the Jets are – can you stop the Jets? Right. No. There, there's no stopping them. Yeah. Oh, they'll be stopping them. Sam Darnold, three weeks ago, he's seeing ghosts, and now he's the toast of the town again. Toast of the town. Well, I don't know. He's toast of the town. Oh, he's oh Joe. He's the toast of the town. Broadway Sam, they call him Joe. Oh, come on. Oh, oh Joe. Wait, wait a second, later. Let's talk hockey. <laughs> uh, so you got it was just again everybody was there setting the seed. Just very uh, the trades and the, the, the talk, the, the the ranger banter, if you will, <laughs> and uh, so it was great, man. I was having a good time, and then that puck dropped, and then was it two and a half minutes, three minutes later, as per usual, the Rangers give up an early goal, and makes you want to just say, "What the hell." Is going on here again? I seen this story. Then they take a penalty right after that. They just want to kill the momentum right away. Right. Make that happiness go away. That anticipation. And uh, and of course, it was by a guy that I had totally was saying, my, my, my drill's bad. Who they have? Max Domi. He's got. He's having a terrible year. Yeah. Terrible." Then he gets his fifth goal of the year <laughs> to start the game. Georgiev is not looking good. Would you agree with me there at that point after a couple goals? He, he was hideous early in that game. Hideous. hideous. He was hideous. Yes. Uh, yeah, he was bad. That's about as bad as he's been. And like you said, Max Domi opens the scoring early. Uh, two minutes in, gets that goal, and that was that was the that was kind of a, a fluke goal. The puck just kind of bounced bounced way up in the air, and Georgiev, I think that's the goal. Georgiev couldn't see it. Then the next thing you know, it just lands right where it had to land, and 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 Domi knocks it in the net, and then uh, Lekinen or something like that gets a, gets another goal at the ten minute mark, and now it's two nothing. Now and things then you get, get quieter. The, uh, things are getting quieter in the crowd. Right, right, right. Except for Costa. 
Oh, Carl. He's, he, he's going up and everybody else going down. He said, ah, <laughs> that's right. That's right, baby. Tank, baby. Tank. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hurt yourself. And I am not exaggerating that at all. That is, you cannot appreciate Costa unless you, until you see him live. So it's two nothing that the first period's dwindling. You just kind of, all right, can we just survive the first period? We get to the, we get to the, get to the locker room and then we kind of get this figured out. And then they get another goal from Domi and they go into the end of the first period down three nothing. And now Coast is apoplectic. Wow, he's losing it. He's, I mean, he never had it, but, <laughs> but yeah, he's like, I told you. I right. told you. He's done with the I told you shows about everything. Right. And, you know, go ahead, just, spend your money. Spend your money on this team. <laughs> That's right. Spend your money. <laughs> That's his, his go-to. Spend your money. But, but you, know. You, you know what's great? You, you know what's great about Costa, and 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 I I love him. And he, the guy takes a the guy takes a pounding as much as anybody in this. He's in, in the, for the bid. He's all in. Right. But he, he comes in. He I love watching him operate because he comes in. He comes up the stairs. He gets his stool. He's always got this little stool. He sets up his little stool in his spot. He's always in the same spot at every viewing party. As long as we're upstairs, he has his spot. Then he takes out the light. And then he's got, hey, what's the Wi-Fi? What's the Wi-Fi? So I get him the Wi-Fi. Right? He said, they said, what's the password? And he puts it in and he can't get the light to work. He's got his little Bud Light goal light that syncs up to the Wi-Fi. And he said, it's not working, man. And so he's sitting there. He's yelling at the Wi-Fi. He's yelling because the password ain't right. He's yelling because the light don't work. <laughs> what's going on, right? So finally, he's, he's crying. He's watching this whole thing. I'm watching him. on. He's sitting at his desk right now. He's crying. He's laughing so hard. So he's sitting there. He fights with the Wi-Fi. Finally gets it going. The light goes on. All right, all is well. He puts the phone down. He puts the light down. Then out comes the monkey. Then out comes the monkey's baby. He sets them on the table. Now he's ready to go. Now he's in his seat, and he's ready to go. Let's go! <laughs> Just ready to, he's ready to go nuts. <laughs> oh, you're getting nuts whether they win or lose, <laughs> which is good because I, used, I was telling people at the – Show at the the viewing party that back in the day in the old time garden, you know, I'm taking the old time garden, but you know, in the seventies, every section had a coaster, right? <laughs> Everybody knew a coaster, and that's what made it so great because you had you had a guy who was just had his own bit, who had his just being himself out of control. Right. And nobody was afraid. Nobody, like, hid from the guy. You either right. you joined him, which we do join Costa when when he's not rooting against the team, or you kind of, like, try to ignite some of the comedic, uh, you know, elements of him. And that's what I was doing. I don't know if he noticed that. But as the Rangers were getting down, I was getting more positive. Right. I was like, come on, boys. We can do this. Right. He could do this, and he would just go into, yeah, do some more drugs <laughs> outside. Do, do, do drugs, drugs. <laughs> what are you smoking? Pass it over here. Yeah. <laughs> up, 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 up. He would go into all his. Right. And I says, come on, boys. Three nothing. We can get this done. We can get this done. And he was just not hearing it. And then what happens, Jim? Well, the, the second period starts, and if I remember correctly, the Rangers came out early in that second period looking like they were they were going to get it together and maybe, you know, start playing a little better and get a little more involved in this game. And then Shea Weber makes it 4 nothing, And now, I mean, now you could hear a pin drop three blocks away. It's <laughs> so quiet in the bar. I mean, it's 4 nothing. 
And I think I think in the history of our viewing parties, I think we've only had like one really bad loss. I think it was the Capitals. And I can't even remember the score, but I seem to remember them get beat pretty bad at one of the viewing parties. But that's only happened like once. We have a good record. And even if we've lost, it's usually been a competitive game. So so immediately you and I start giving stuff away because <laughs> we gotta yeah. keep people gotta keep people's spirits up. I'm afraid they're gonna leave. So we start giving stuff away, and and it, it was brought to our attention that that was when things started turning around for the Rangers when we started giving stuff away. So then uh, a couple of minutes after Weber scores, then we got Philip Heedle scores, gets the Rangers on the board. It's four to one. We're thinking, all right, at least now, we're, at least now, at the very least, we know we're not going to get shut out tonight. Yeah, and you also have to understand <laughs> in Montreal. We're playing Carey Price, who they can't score off of. Right. Georgiev is playing like crap. He can't stop a beach ball with a boat oar. And it's like things are not looking good. And Jim starts raffling off stuff. And, you know, give, you know, give, some, uh, you know some, give some happiness to these fans who have now <laughs> – you know, gathered to see this nonsense that we call Ranger hockey. And I'm feeling like, well, here we go. Uh, another game where they they look totally different than they looked the previous night. Right. And also, when it's 4 nothing, I forget, I forget who it was, but somebody had gone downstairs at the bar, and they come upstairs, and they said, there are four Canadians fans downstairs. And the next thing we notice, one girl who's wearing a, she was wearing a Canadians jersey, but I can't remember who. Carrie she's, Price. Was it Carrie Price? She's standing at the bottom of the stairs and she's just yelling up at us, go Habs, go. So, of course, this is, to, now, yeah, we're losing four nothing at this point. And that just, of course, just angers us all. Uh, I mean, people are just they're screaming down the stairs at this at this girl and, and everybody's just going nuts. So then it, it right after that is when the Rangers scored. Now it's four one. And, you know, she just she's all she's got to say is, well, it's still four one. You know, blah, blah, blah. And she's going on and on. And then then a minute late, less than a minute later, then we get Buchnevich's goal. Now it's four to two, the dreaded two goal lead. Okay, now we're we're halfway back, and we're starting to get a little, you know, yeah, I could a little feel buzz. It. A little people, buzz. Didn't wanna, people didn't want to say it, but they they were getting a little bit hopeful, even right. though right Ranger fans by nature are not a hopeful bunch, but they can't help it. They are they're you know I know it's going to end in despair most times, but they were getting very hopeful and very like I could see people were thinking it, but nobody was articulating. And of course, now I'm trying to get. Coasty even more crazed. I'm like two goals. Hey, let's take it. I'm throwing in the Phil Esposito stuff. Ten minute blocks, five minute blocks. Let's take. Let's get the goals. And uh, I say, like, yeah, take baby, take. I'm never wrong. I'm never wrong. He went into a whole thing, and, and said, we're playing the we're playing the goal song, and and he's I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't the loser. I play that goal song. He's getting all aggravated with everybody. So then, then Butch Nevich scores. It's that's four to two. And as Ranger fans, we're either thinking, "All right, are we got, are we getting back into this game, or or now is it going to go the other way and we lose this game eight to two?" Because we've seen that happen too. Right. They start to climb back. You get just a little bit of hope, and then they 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 pull the door out from under you. It's the T's, the Ranger right. T's, the Ranger T's. Then two minutes later, here comes Brendan Lemieux. Brendan Lemieux. Oh my God! Everybody loves him now. Oh, it's a love affair. I told you the first game after the first game, Ranger fans are gonna love this guy, and sure well, enough, boy, too. falling more and more in love with Brendan Lemieux. The so Brendan Lemieux scores his first of two goals, and now it's four to three. Now the place is going crazy. Now we're into the game. People are yelling, screaming, the "Let's go Rangers!" chants are going through the bar. The goal song's blasting. Everybody's going crazy. It's it's 4-3. We're back in this. And then the second period ends. 
come out for the third period. They were only down 4-3. And then Lekkonen scores again, and it's 5-3. And I think we all I think we all thought at that point, all right, we had our fun. <laughs> at least, at least we're, not, we're not getting blown out. We're in this game. But, you know, I think at 5-3, everybody was like, wow, this is going to be, you know, it's going to be tough to tough to climb back into. In Montreal, th- we're in the third period. And that was what? That's five minutes in. So, you know, all right, you got to yeah. get back. You know, it, it took a lot of wind it. out of the sails. Right. And <laughs> four, three, I was, I personally was thinking, boy, if we can get out of here with just a point after that beginning and at the being at the Bell Center. And I was, I, and, but when, like you said, when that five, when it made it five, three on Lekkonen's goal, I was, I was like, oh. But I wouldn't say it. I kept right. saying that this Ranger team is resilient. They're young. <laughs> They're young. And, and that was set in Costa off more. I think the other fans thought I was really delusional when I was saying that. And, and you know, we're all think yeah, we're all thinking it. Nobody wants to nobody wants to say it, but we're all thinking it. Five three, it'll be a tough nut to crack in the third period. You know, they kind of because you kind of build up, you climb back into it, and then they just kind of, you know, you feel like that fifth goal is just gonna be like the final nail. But then 30 seconds later, 30 seconds later, they hadn't even announced the Lekkonen goal yet in Montreal. And here comes our Temi Panarin. The Brits again. Once again. Puts the puck in the net. And now it's 5-4. Now we're back in it. Especially, Bar's especially, going crazy again. We're right back in it. It's only a goal. And then, now it's like playoff atmosphere. Yes, it's absolutely. Been while, it's been a while for the Rangers in the playoffs. Absolutely. And, and they, they really haven't had any important games, but it felt like there in that bar that it was a playoff game. Like this, people were, were nervous. They had that and that focus. Absolutely. Except for Costa, of course. And, and at this point, these four Canadians fans have come upstairs and are sitting in the middle of our viewing party. Smack dab in the middle. And I do mean in the middle because they put all their shit right on top of Eddie's wife's stuff. <laughs> yes. Sat right in her spot and put all their stuff right on top of hers. Yes. So they have literally plopped themselves in the middle of our viewing party, which is unprecedented. This has never happened before that we've had opposing fans infiltrate our viewing party like this. If they were guys, I don't think we would have allowed it, but they were all women. They would have got thrown down the stairs. As it was... The girl, uh, our our female fans were having. One of our female fans yelled out, "Who let the horse in?" <laughs> who? <laughs> who? Right? Who let the horse in? Who? Who? And I could tell you that I could tell you that Jen was not happy. They were up there. She's like, "I'm going to throw one of them to fuck down the stairs in a minute." <laughs> you can see <laughs> Chris and Jen both in the chat room at the same. Jen says fucking twats and Chris says I did not like those girls at all so anyway now it's 5-4 right and uh, we're back in this game then Lemieux scores a couple of minutes later three minutes later Lemieux scores the game is tied the place goes berserkowitz as Eddie likes to say yes absolutely berserk People are yelling, screaming, singing. We're all chanting at Costa. You were wrong. You were wrong. Everybody's going crazy. Now, like Eddie says, now now this game has taken on a whole new meaning because now we've got these four girls, these slobs from Canada, in the middle of this viewing party, and we don't want to lose this game. Now we, we cannot lose this game. And then a couple of minutes later, Jacob Truba with 12 minutes, uh, excuse me, eight, about eight, eight minutes left in the game, scores a goal that was just like a kind of a, it was kind of a weird goal because it was just a shot that we thought, it looked like Price had it. And all of a sudden he turns around and you realize the puck's kind of trickling in behind him. And the Rangers had a 6-5 lead and we blew the roof off Slattery's. Everybody going crazy. Singing, dancing, the goal song was out, screaming, ballistic. It was amazing. And then, Absolutely and then, amazing. 
And then we had this. It was it was literally like the end of a playoff. The last five minutes, the end of a playoff game. Rangers had to kill off a, a power play, which <laughs> which Eddie called. He's like, "Just wait, we're gonna get that home cook in Montreal penalty. We're gonna have to kill it there off." It comes. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it comes. And sure enough, like a minute later, there it was. There it was. So predictable. It's like wrestling. Right. And then uh, and the Rangers killed it off. And then they pulled uh, they pulled Price. Lemieux missed the hat trick by about eh, maybe about three inches. And uh, the Rangers held it off. We serenaded those four girls right out of the room with the na na hey hey goodbye. And that was it. Put it in the books. Our most thrilling viewing party to date and controversial. Yes, it was great, man. Like you said, everybody was uh, collectively worrying in the last minute, last two minutes for the Rangers to collapse or just keep that, trying to mentally keep that puck out of the net. And they did it, man. And it was, like you said, it was an explosion. It was like almost like, you know, when you watch the cup videos and they'll, they'll show like the, go to the reaction at Madison Square Garden, you know, when the Rangers would win in Vancouver and they'd show the fans going nuts. That's how it was. It was crazy. Now I know it was just the game, but when you get together with friends and, you know, this kind of family, we're all just so invested in the team. It it, it became like a playoff game. Plus we were all right. there together. We all wanted to have the ultimate fun, you know? Right. I mean, yeah, there's 40, you know, 40 of us together. We've been doing this for 10 years with, a lot of the same people and you feed off everybody's energy and uh you know it's just it, it was it was crazy it was a lot of fun and uh two of my favorite things from the viewing party <laughs> was chris johnert constantly yelling out the sam lines from that imitation uh, the the radio show he's yelling out you'll just hear all of a sudden Sh chris johnert to yell out and my periodontist is here <laughs> <laughs> And then the other thing that I was very impressed with is that your wife knows all the words to the Rangers victory song. Yes, she does. She knows all the words. I don't even think I don't even think I know all the words. She knows all of them. That was one of the stipulations in order to marry me. She had to learn was that it? song. No, that's like it a in the, diner. It was in the vows, right? No, no. Yeah. We no, played the victory song when the she... game was over, and her and Chris Johnert sang it together. Yes. Wow, I, Chris John very knows very all the words surprised. Too. Yes, he does. Yeah, wow. I know most of them. I don't think I know all of them, but I was very, very impressed with that. I'm pretty sure now. I might be wrong, but I think that song is also the guy who wrote that wrote "God Bless America," or one of our patriotic songs here in in, in the United States. It wasn't. It wasn't "God Bless America" because that's Irving Berlin. Irving Berlin. Irving Berlin it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think the, you wrote uh, the Victory. It wasn't song. the Star Spangled Banner, so I don't know what <laughs> else to be. Scott Key wrote the Rangers Victory. So song. maybe uh, I'll have to look more into that. <laughs> maybe he wrote uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy. I don't know. That's George M. Cohen, I think. So we'll, we'll have to get back on that uh, piece of uh, misinformation later. <laughs> So, yeah, it was a fun time had by all. I still don't have my voice back from Saturday. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, that was great, man. And, I mean, and the first time the Rangers come back from a 4 nothing game since 1991. Yeah. And yep. we're all there. I mean, that is that's epic. Yeah, so it's a it's a game we'll talk about for years. And, you know, I, I said this the other night. I said, you remember a couple of years ago, I don't remember who was – I think it was when Rennie was the coach. You remember them going up to Montreal and they had a 5 nothing lead? They lost the game 6-5. You remember that game? Uh, I think Howie Sussman said he wrote Santa Claus is coming to town. J. Fred Coots. Yeah. He wrote I, Santa. Well, that's a great know. American. That's a patriotic song. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I got that mixed up with patriotism. But well, what's Santa more patriotic Claus? than Santa Claus? That's true. Right? Uh, so anyway, so it was nice to, you know, they had that game years ago where they went up to Montreal and they, I think they blew a 5 nothing lead. I think Rennie was the coach then. I'm sure somebody will correct me and if I'm, if I'm wrong. And they lost 6-5 up there. So it was people nice. Were to, people were telling me about that game. Yeah. 
Everybody remembers the bad games. I hope they remember this good game. Yeah, I think this is one we'll remember for a long time. And then uh, Brent Spiegel came up to me and goes, you know, I remember the Rangers coming back from a th- uh, 3 nothing deficit to beat the Canadians. Or a three-goal deficit. I don't know if it was 3 nothing. The day the, the, day the uh, Super Bowl Sunday, the day the Giants beat the the giant when the Giants won one of their Super Bowls. He goes, I remember that it was an afternoon game, and he always took that as a kind of uh, it boded well for the Giants. The Rangers made that comeback on the same day. So. Uh, Daryl Bush reporting that February nineteenth, two thousand eight, was the Ranger Montreal game that I'm talking about. So yeah, that would have been when Rennie was coach. Yes. Seems so long ago because it was because it was, it was <laughs> before before uh, blue shirt banner it was it was before us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so it was. It was so much fun, man. I, I just that's all I could say is it was my favorite by far, yeah. just because of the how it happened, and the public drunkenness was not as crazy, which was weird because. Those are the ones I remember, but yeah. everybody, but but everyone was so focused on the game, and it was great. And we gave so many great things away. We did. Uh, you know, I thought it apropos that Dan Catter won the shot glasses, or at least got the no, range. Chris, Chris Johnner got the shot glasses. Well, that's even more apropos. <laughs> He said, "Yeah, because he said I'm taking the shot glasses." I said, "You don't. You of all people don't have Ranger shot glasses." He says, "No, I don't." Can you believe it? Wow! Bless you. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it was uh, it was a great game, and man, that that Brendan Lemieux is now uh, is it Brendan or Brandon? Brendan. Brendan. Yeah. yeah th- He's the darling. Oh, I mean, like, listen, deservedly so. I mean, you know. We've been looking for this kind of hockey player uh, for years, probably since Sean Avery. And you've had some guys who've done very well in the agitator role, no doubt about it. But a guy that can actually put the puck in the net once in a while, he did it twice against Montreal. He's taken, he's getting beat up by Tom Wilson, but he's dropping the gloves. He's willing to go. He's a willing participant. He's in the middle of everything. Uh, he's getting high sticked. He's losing his tooth. He's, he's on the he's on the wild bench last night. <laughs> he so went right at the to, door to the bench. I was saying, if that was in the eighties or nineties, they would have just pummeled him. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. But then maybe a lot of those guys didn't realize he was. Maybe thought he he made a mistake, but that was no mistake. He's you know he's an agitator. Agent provocateur. Yep. Uh, so he was in there and he's mixing it up. And then you score some goals. And if if you have ever read Sean Avery's book, he said that that annoyed the other team more than anything he could do was to actually score after pulling all the hijinks that he did during the game because that would shut them up. They had nothing to say. Right. So. Great player now, you know, Jim, a lot of people worrying about these young players that are, are not going to be signed or unsigned at the end of the year, uh, who can become free agents. And he's one of them. And uh, Tony D'Angelo last night, I mean, some of these guys, you know, it's going to be interesting how they can figure a way to, to, to keep these guys, especially these young guys that are developing right now. Yeah, it would be a shame to see a, a Brendan Lemieux or a Tony D'Angelo to to leave us after kind of finding their games with us, you know. But uh, anyway, that that's for another time and that's for another worry discussion. But uh, they follow it up yesterday. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I thought that game. Well, first of all, I thought the Montreal game was, it was just, how can I say, uh, it's a very dysfunctional game. Right. It was, it really wasn't like, it wasn't classic hockey. It was like a lot of bad goaltending. 
on right. both ends. Georg- Georgiev got a lot tighter when it meant, you know, when it meant the game meant something. He he held he held true. Uh, Carey Price was awful in that game. Uh, that's the worst game I've ever seen Carey Price ever play. And you know, thank God. But then the wild game was another game that I thought was just boring. Boring, 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 more. <laughs> I mean, it was a snooze fest. I hate the, the wild away. Matt Zuccarello must be the unhappiest guy. He's on a team that has no interest in any kind of offense. They play it very close to the vest. Uh, the game was just... It was not good, and they are they are a slow team. That's yeah. like watching like you watch some of those Ranger games from the seventies, and you see you know like guys like Greshner and Maloney and Vadney on defense and Espo and those guys, and the, the game just looks really slow. That's how the Wild look. I mean, that is yeah. not a that is not a fast. Well, they're a veteran team, team is fucking sandwich shoving down our throats, right? Uh, how veteran they are. Was that mean? Does that mean slow? It was so boring. Yes, Coast. It was ho hum, and I felt like the Rangers were asleep for most of that game. Uh, again, it's like you know, and it's a, a second game of a back to back. You're not really looking. You're hoping they don't come out, but the, they didn't come out with you know guns and blazing in that game. As far uh, as it it kind of was. I felt like the, they let the wild slow them down. You know what I mean? They, they let the wild set the pace, and then once the once the Rangers got going and picked up their speed, played a little bit more of their game. I thought that was when things kind of turned around for them last night. Yeah, and I, I don't know. Then that they go and especially I think it was the third period. Um, they went so long without getting a shot. It was like 13 minutes into the freaking 14 minutes into the, the third period. They had like three shots. Like what happened? I mean, they've been literally l- lulled to sleep. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, I just please don't don't shit the bed and lose to the wild here. I'm going to make the change. Did I just write this a call from both ends? Nope. Just called the TV. So I was. Uh, very despondent at that point because I didn't want to lose in a while. Now, Matt Zuccarello returned. Yes. Um, what did you think about that whole uh, thing? That was, uh, I thought, pretty cool. I mean, it wasn't over the top. No, they gave him a nice little tribute video, which, of course, MSG, uh, the MSG Network only showed you half of because, God forbid, we fucking cut out a half a minute commercial so we could watch the goddamn video. So, by the time it came back on, they were already halfway through the video. But the video was nice. I liked the fact that he came out on the ice after that and acknowledged the fans. And it was nice. And they, you know, they chanted his name when he had the puck, and that's fine. And I, I thought the stage was set for him to beat Henrik in the shootout. I thought when they tied the game at two, I'm like, oh man, if this gets to overtime, you just know he's gonna be he's gonna be one of the first guys out for the shootout. And man, that I could see it happening. Either that, or I figured Eric Stahl would score the final, the game-winning goal for on a feed from Zook. That was how I saw that game ending. But no, it was nice. You know, it's it was a nice uh, you know return for him. He's certainly one of maybe the second most uh, beloved Rangers since the '94 team behind Hank. I mean, I, probably right. Yes, I think so. So Ryan, him, Ryan Callahan, and Zook. I think Zook was probably. We've had a discussion before. A lot of people feel that Zook was more loved than Ryan Callahan. I, I go with that. I, I go miss, with that, too. I misspoke what I said back-to-backs, I said earlier. But uh, it was the Brady Shea show, which, I mean, he's much maligned, man. Everybody, like, when I met at them at the viewing party, they wanted confirmation that, they, that Brady Shea sucked. Like, I said, hey, you're not going to get any arguments with me. I go, the guy's underperformed for, like, two and a half years now but uh he got a goal and i was like okay all right and then uh zach parisi former new jersey double tied it who amazingly to sam is 35 years old 
Yes. Sir. Oh, Joe, he's 35, Joe. I can't believe it. It seems like, well, he was 34 not that long ago, and now here he is, 35, Joe. Look at this. Zach Parisi, Joe. Seems to be a pattern here. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Sam. 35. Mm. And, uh, fucking idiots. <laughs> Just fucking idiots. And they were going on about Ryan Donato, how he's so great, but he hasn't. He only had one goal on the season. I said, oh, here we go. Here's the kiss of death. Kiss of death. Oh, the high-scoring Ryan Donato hasn't found his touch. I'm like, wait a minute. That's totally contradictory. Well, he found his touch. Oh, and then... And I and I understand that you know a majority of of the people watching, the, the majority of them probably don't really realize this. But making such a big, they, they of course they got to make a big deal. Oh, the lineage, Joe. Look at we've got we've got Brendan Lemieux, his father played in the NHL. We've got Donato, his father played in the NHL, and of course Zach Parisi's father was J.P. Paris, played fourteen years in the NHL. Do they not know that this is one of the like most infamous guys in the Ranger history? No Ranger fan wants to hear that name ever. I had to explain <laughs> to my wife why they were talking about J.P. Parisi. And I said, it's it's great that you brought that up because I was – I go, why the hell are they talking about a guy who scored an overtime, overtime goal uh, against the Rangers to oust the Rangers from a playoff series – as a, a dreaded Islander, that they don't know the Rangers' history. This is like a Red Sox uh, extolling Bill Buckner, the late Bill Buckner. I right. mean, this is a guy that uh, you know that you don't mention the guy's name. And that was like a and that was like a tipping point. You know, that was like that was like the Islanders' coming of age when they did that to the Rangers. It was right. like, it's like they'd where's... arrived. You know, eliminating right. the Rangers. What was that? The was that the first round of the 75 playoffs? Yes. Did I have that right? The first round, I'm pretty sure and, it was 35. And they knocked the Rangers out of the playoffs. I don't think the Rangers made the playoffs again until 78, 79 when they had that run. Come on. Do they not know? Do they not think or do they just not care because it's all part of the brand now? The Islanders are all part of the brand. We're all one big, happy fucking family. In the, no, I think the they it's just... They're super giddy that they found a relevance to all of it. It's the same thing with the Stahl brothers. Before the game, they were talking about, well, Eric Stahl's playing. Mark isn't playing the Stahl brothers. Uh, what's, why even talk about it? If Mark Stahl is not playing, why are you bringing it up? And they kept bringing it up. And Eric Stahl would have faced off against Mark Stahl tonight, but Mark is, just came back from ankle surgery. Uh, right. It's just like, they're, they're just dumb. They don't understand like a diehard ranger who, in his fifties or sixties might just have an issue with J.P. Parisi, but they don't care. They're they're just milk toast. <laughs> they don't they don't harbor any ill feelings towards players. I do. Like you know, if you're if you're a ranger fan in your in your fifties or sixties. Now I was young when that happened, but you know I, I'm pretty. I'm I'm pretty learned when it comes to the history, so I understand the significance. If you're you know somebody in their fifties or sixties, that's a name that hurts when you hear it. You know what I mean? That hurts to hear that name. Yes. Regardless of what's transpired since then, still hearing that name conjures up those memories and it hurts. You're twisting a knife. But oh Joe. Say JP Parisi to Pete Stemkowski. See how he relax. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you know, or whatever. This is just dumb. Dumb. Dumb dumb. Costa, I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but your video has gone black. So you're Chris not Chris Jonah you, gets his wish. You're not on camera. Chris Jonah gets Jonard. his wish. Jonat or Jonat? Jonat. Jonat. What yeah, did I say? Right. No, I say Jonat. You I think you oh. say Jonat. Oh, okay. I say potato. So now, but uh, before we get to calls, I have this. I have the video from uh, from David Quinn's press conference after the game last night that I want to play. And I don't know. 
how well the video itself is going to play, but I'm hoping the audio will be okay because I want you guys to hear what he had to say, mostly about about D'Angelo and then uh, uh, another certain player. So I'm going to I'm going to put this in the screen here and we're going to turn off the mute so we can hear him. And if the if the audio is laggy, please let me know right away in the in the chat so that I'll and then I'll shut it off and we'll, I'll just kind of wing it from there, but let's let's try and listen to this. Let me make sure I got the volume all the way up. Okay. It's so it'd be so easy for Tony to just look for Panarin uh, in overtime there, but is that maybe one of those things that separates him from some other defensemen? Is that he will look to shoot rather than look to pass? I mean, you have two guys going at him, he, and a quick recognition to go look to shoot there. Yeah, it was. Uh, you're talking about the overtime goal. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I thought they. You know, it was a great scissor by Tony and Brad, uh, and he saw that lane once he came over the top was a little bit of parting of the Red Sea, and he did a great job holding on to it. I mean, if he had passed it, I would have thrown up on the bench, so I'm glad he didn't. So um, we got rewarded for it. Has he eliminated some of the ups and downs of his game? Tony? Yeah, Tony? yeah, Tony Tony played well tonight. I mean, I thought, you know, obviously his offense always speaks for itself, but, you know, I thought the other aspects of his game were dead on tonight. Yeah, he's been consistent. Rel- yeah, he's been consistent, yeah. He's, he's played well. Coach, uh, Bushnevich at the end had a zillion chances and looked very frustrated. Did you, he did? Did you see his face on the that. bench? No, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Captain Happy? Didn't notice that. <laughs> Captain Happy! <laughs> Just thoughts on, uh, you know, you switched up the lines a little bit tonight, and then it looked like in the third period you were playing around with it. So what did you see? What was your assessment? It looks like trying to find the right co- Captain uh, Happy. I was calling him Grumpy Cat last night. <laughs> Captain Happy. Now, did he say that with love, or do you think he's a little he bit just, annoyed? I, I well, I mean, you, you made. I know the screenshot was a little small there, but if you go back and watch that video, there's, there's, it looks a little. Like I he, think it's a look of a little frustration. I think he's frustrated with the guy. Look, the guy. What was it? The um. What was the the uh the game before the Montreal game? Who did they play? Oh, Ottawa. Butchnevich, they're killing a penalty, and Butchnevich steps on the ice. He didn't even know he wasn't supposed to be on the ice. He doesn't kill penalties. So, you know, that was why Quinn called him out after that game. I, I just, this guy I just, think, I mean, I think Butchnevich has been playing well, though. At times. At times, yeah. I, but I think, I, I still think he's very frustrating to the coaching staff. And there were times where, you know, Last night he had a bad turnover that I think led to a uh, I think led to one of the Minnesota goals. Um, you know he's he's got a little he's got a little Kovalev in him, you know, where he's going to frustrate the hell out of you at times. I mean, he had uh, so many chances. I mean, I I can't believe he hits a post this and that. I, and also, I've been watching him defensively. I know, you know, when a goal is scored, I, I didn't catch what you saw last night, but. I thought he's been playing well. I mean, I don't think he he's not as – I mean, he's still getting the minutes, right? I mean, his minutes aren't going down. Um, I, I think he was benched for a couple of shifts in that uh, Ottawa game. Is it that he, he doesn't like – because from what that video, what I gather – that's not like tongue in cheek. Uh, that's what we call him in the locker room. That's more of an indictment, right? Of right. that kind of attitude being shown on the bench, because he looks like he's ready to cry. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> yeah. Last night, last night when he missed those opportunities, I mean, they kept showing him on on camera, and I mean, he was he was upset. I mean, and he's got I a you know he's got a miserable want- puss on him all the time anyway. I want my player to care, though. You know, I want him to be like, <laughs> right. like Rick Nash would miss all those opportunities to go back smiling. You know, like right. uh, I'm catching my check same. tomorrow. Right. Uh, yeah. I want my guy to care, but if the coach is, you know, maybe they don't want to have guys show their poker face on the bench. But there were a lot of guys in the old days. I mean, Jerry Ronick was a hothead. He'd wear his emotions on his face. They'd be cursing, slamming their stick, 
a lot of players were like that. So I don't know. I, I don't know why he, because I took it. Now, what are the people in the chat room think? DB Maven says it's sarcasm. Uh, yes, the too many players, uh, DB Maven's right there. There were too, the too many men in Ottawa. Yeah, he, that was egregious. Oh well, yeah, that was that was when he stepped on the ice and didn't know he wasn't supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, that, that was terrible, like you said. Uh, but I don't know. Usually, I'm the Pavel Buklevich detractor, but I think he's been playing pretty well. I mean, I wish he'd score more goals, but uh, you know, he's got a lot of points. Oh, what do you do? I just think he's. I think he's. Enigmatic. I think he's got a lot of Kovalev in him. He's just that type of player. He he can be dazzling at times and incredibly frustrating at others. And I and you know, he's what's he got? Three goals? I think four and eleven. Is it four and twelve? Maybe. He has uh yeah, four and fourteen. So four he's got four. eighteen points. I mean, points well, that's not wise. Too shabby. I mean, no, not that? at all. Not at all. Would you rather have an exuberant Tim Gettinger or uh, Captain Happy? Uh, you know, no. it's, but I, I don't even think it's, uh, you know, I think the Captain Hap, Happy is is a sarcastic jab, but, you know, and frustrating a little bit. But, you know, again, I just think, uh, I think he's beating his head, you know, he's tired of beating his head against the wall a little bit with Butch Nevich. Maybe that's who Kreider's talking about when he said, you know, game after game, we're talking about doing the same things and, and we're beating our head against the uh, wall. You're lucky Kreider got that goal, or I'd be all over him for saying that. He gets the goal that ties it. He deposited that puck, and uh, it's great. Yeah. So. And then the Rangers took it in overtime, Tony D'Angelo, like a man. Did you see his celebration? No. See, he skated I, I, over. He skated over by the glass to the fans, and he's just going like this. He's just like. You know, like, uh, <laughs> bring like, it on. Yeah, exactly. Want, right. Uh, listen. Uh, so it, uh, it, uh, it was, it was interesting. Yeah, I mean, was. listen, and it was, it was exciting, man. Tony D, but I would say both these wins, Jim, very dysfunctional wins. They went, listen, I'm glad for the four points. Thank you so much. Thank you for right. the memories. But if I had to grade the Rangers hockey, eh, not so much. I could see hey, the team getting blown out, you know, uh, again. Right. It wasn't like they there was a system in place and they worked and they worked and they worked. Now, again, Minnesota, uh, Minnesota was playing rope-a-dope against them. So, uh, you know, it's uh, – uh, and now they uh, got. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I just wanted to say that. Uh, by the way, D'Angelo scored the game-winning goal the day after he pissed off, and I do mean pissed off the the uh, the chart the chart lovers of hockey. Chart lovers pizza. Because Tony D posted something on Twitter how he loves. Someone had posted a, some kind of chart. Was that Ryan was about, Strom or was it, it was about Ryan Strom? Oh. And D'Angelo said, "I love seeing stuff like this. Like Strom has been one of our best players. You know, he said something like, why 'Why don't you try watching the game' or something like that.' And the the people just went absolutely batshit. Oh, we're watching the game. What do you mean? These stats are important. <laughs> hey. about- Meanwhile, here's a guy that fucking plays in the NHL. Oh, he don't I think know anything. He, knows what he's- he don't know. Well, what does he know? I've got a spreadsheet. I know. I know." Uh, and you, you know all the usual Doug suspects. Rogowski, all the they were all was, out. Doug Rogowski up was on him. Ranger uh, blue shirt forever on HF boards. He knows more. Right, right. Who well, these spring chart doesn't show that? <laughs> right. Rangers uh, Twitter, they know best. And then and then Carp called them out too. They're like, uh, you know, so he's talked about Butchnevich and all the fans will complain how they pick on they pick on poor Butchnevich. The coach is such a meanie, and of course, the you know the, the fan base does like that. What Carp does he know? sucks. He writes Carp for the sucks. Right. This is why I won't buy the athletic. That's what people say oh. because of writing like this. 
Rick Rick Carpinello has forgotten more about hockey than 99% of this fan base will ever know. Heresy! You know, you know, it used to be that you know when when you were younger, you looked up to the to the older guys to their for their knowledge of the game and the things you could learn from them. And now it's just is if you're under the age of 25, you have so much disdain for anybody that's been following hockey for a long time because you just feel like they don't know anything. We're dinosaurs. We don't right. They don't know nothing. Look, we we do watch the games. We do watch the games, but the the charts are important. Science. I got when it comes to hockey, fuck science. Science. <laughs> science. Science. Fuck hockey. I mean, all right. Science. Statistics. Fine. Face-off percentage. Goals. Assists. That's what I'm interested in. Wins. You show me a graph. Forget about it. Right. You two wins. Who out. scored? Who didn't? How many did the goaltender give up? How many shots on goal? What is wrong with the the stats we have are just fine. I mean, what everybody's we, an expert now. Everyone. I mean, I get it. I get it with baseball. I I understand how it can you know how it can enhance your your evaluations in baseball. Baseball is hockey. I don't think it's necessary. I'm sorry, I just don't. Because baseball, you got 20 minutes between each pitch. <laughs> hockey is such a fluid game. You cannot predict what's going to happen right baseball is so baseball is so situational hockey isn't hockey's you know, constant like you said it's fluid it's constant movement it's 20 minutes you know up and down the ice oh look where his shots are from look what he's doing his shot suppression stats they're right. not as good right and it's funny because tony d'angelo who's been a uh, a darling of those the the guys is actually go, you know who's look at Tony D when he's on the ice during a, a you know a half gibbon moon or whatever <laughs> like he's got thirty shots in those day games or whatever and he's coming to defend uh, Strom. Oh, look at the goals and assists. Now listen, has he slowed down a bit? Yeah. I mean, you know, he's not going to be getting point two points a game. I think right now, as Jim mentioned to me before the show, that Mika's coming back. Sabina Jad is going to be coming back. So tomorrow night, tomorrow night, that's a perfect timing. We got Heedle and Strom could battle out for that second center park uh, plot, uh, position. So it's just what the Rangers needed. Even though I think it's going to take Mika a couple games to get back into it. I think it's fine, and then like, listen, man. I thought Strom did a very admirable <laughs> job. The Rangers kept their team afloat without their second best player. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. So I, 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 I don't get it. God bless Tony D'Angelo. Uh, again, like at the top of the show, I said it's going to be a how they're going to be able to keep some of these guys that we're starting to get. Attached to will be uh, will be something, but whatever. It, it's it's. I just take it a game by game, and this season so far, even with its ups and downs, the whole roller coaster deal, it's been uh, it's been much better than last year, of course, and the year before. So what are we right? Right. Uh, All right. So before we get to before we get to some guests here. I have a question that I that I wanted to pose last week. I need I need advice, opinion, and advice here. And I meant to pose this last week, and I forgot. So let me let me throw it out here before we get to Matt and Costa and Mike Halleck are all waiting. So there's a rumor going around that Santa is going to b- buy me a new Ranger jersey for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a long time since I've had a I've gotten a new Ranger jersey. So Peter Smrek. That's the that's the rumor. Now I wanted to get so there there was you know I was trying to decide what name I wanted on the back of my jersey. It's not going to be a new name. It's not going to be anybody on the current roster because I just I don't trust. I, I, first of all, I don't trust any any of these players enough that they're going to be around long enough for. And and I don't want to be. I, I'm not a guy that's going to go out and buy a Capo Caco jersey because there's a thousand of them. You know, there's a, you watch the game and there's a thousand Panarin jerseys and a thousand Capo Caco. I want something different. So I wanted, so I was thinking of maybe getting 
My first favorite Ranger, when I first started watching, my first favorite Ranger. Ron Grester. John Davidson. He was my first favorite Ranger. But I don't want to get a 30 because it's because that's Hank's number. I get wanted to get zero. the double. I want to get the double zero. Now here's my now here's my here's my quandary. I would be getting the the home jersey, the current home jersey. That's what I'm getting. But with Davidson's name and number on the back, but when he wore double zero, they wore the pajama jerseys. Yes. So would the double zero, would that be weird on the new home jersey with Davidson? Do you think that would be weird? I don't like weird? the old Davidson thing. You don't, like, you don't like the Davidson to begin with? I love Davidson too, but he was bad. I, but he was my first. But when you're seven years old, you don't know who's good and who's bad. You just like my favorite Yankee when I was eight years old, when I was a Yankee fan. You know my favorite Yankee was? Uh, uh, Fred Stanley. Fred Stanley. You're absolutely right. I wrote wow. him a letter, and he sent me an autograph. You know why I liked Fred Stanley? Because he played short, and he could play second, and he played third. And I just thought that was cool. And I was eight years old. What the hell did I know? When you're eight, you don't know nothing. JD was my favorite. He was the guy. He had the he had the cool mask, and he was the goaltender. And he was this big bushy, you know. He was this big, big mustache and the a beard. He was he was just a big mook. He was, he was this big bear. Game. You know what I mean? Game goal, right? So he was my first favorite. It's either, and then and then I and then Anders Hedberg was my second favorite. And then after him, and then after Hedberg was Larouche, Pierre Larouche. Uh. <laughs> He's all about Pittsburgh now. He doesn't <laughs> right. Ranger, uh, right. Yeah, I would certainly. Uh, I would. And go yes, Jen Pittsburgh. did tell me. She said it, she thinks it would be weird if I put the double zero on a jersey that the double zero was never on. I think I agree with that. Not, and that's bes- besides JD being awful. Okay. <laughs> so you I'll think he led us to the seventy nine cup? Yes, uh, I know that. But, so if I eventually someday get the pajama jersey, which I've always wanted because I've always liked those jerseys. I know I'm in the minority. Me and you are in the minority in that, by the way. But I always liked them. And another, that, again, that goes back to those were the jerseys they wore the first time I remember seeing the Rangers play on TV. And that's what they wore the first time I went to Madison Square Garden. So I just I have a soft spot for those jerseys. I'm with Peter J. Fox. I think Hedberg's the way to go. Hedberg, number 15, right? Anders? Possibly. All right. All right. So I should save the double zero for the for if I ever get my pajama jersey. That'll yeah. definitely be a David. That won't even be an issue. There, 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 there will be no discussion. That'll be my Davidson double zero. United Hedberg, Dean, huh? Dean Anders Hedberg. <laughs> Dean Talifus. <laughs> Lucien Deblois. Uh, I think. All right. He's, uh, Peter's talking about Fatiu, twenty-two yeah. favorite. I liked him, but he wasn't my he was he wasn't my favorite. He only played thirty seconds a game, he, right? They let him out like a caged animal in the last minute, and he bored somebody in the back and take a penalty. And see, and and Hedberg and Nielsen when they first showed up, they were still in the pajama jerseys. Get a get a double zero cups Lundqvist jersey. That's a, that the Islander fans would do that. I would never do that. You never disgrace him. By the time you decide, it'll be your birthday. No, I'll make a decision fast. I just wanted the, I just wanted the esteemed opinion of my colleagues here. Of the and then, uh, that's like that that other dumb. I can't say it. Why can't I say it? That dumb whore who got the uh, Dan Girardi candy ass jersey. Oh, Jackie Lamba. <laughs> I hate to say her name. I'll say it. I don't give a fuck. Jackie Lamba. Oh my God! During that, I was going back to the, the, the when I she actually walk. spent money on that stupid fucking. How thing. do you spend like two hundred dollars on a jersey to make fun of a guy who attention? Look at me. Uh, All right, want to talk to Matt Morello? Yeah, let's talk right. to Matt Morello. All right, let's bring Matt in. What's going on, Matthias? Mat- if your lips are wet and ready to go, hold on. That's right. Yeah. Strap your chains. Strap the <laughs> strap the chains. Oh, strap yourselves in, big boy. We're getting wrecked. I got a bucket of water. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I got. I had to get the buckets of water. I had to hose Paulie down. 
<laughs> he erupted like a volcano last night. Right, he erupted yeah. all over my chest. Ah, <laughs> ah, that's so disgusting. But funny. Now, funny you bring your up opinion, the picture. Your opinion was enough. Will you stop? All right, stop fighting. Bring funny you bring up the pajama jersey. My dad actually has it in Esposito. I, mean, I certainly wasn't around for it, but it's grown on me to the point that I might do it in the future. I like it. I I like those jerseys. When yeah, they the brought those back for a couple of throwback nights, they were great. The, the white, white one is impossible to find. The only one that's around is the blue one, but I've seen it on icejerseys.com, and if you time it out right, you can get it on a discount. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So the white one is really hard to find. You can't find it. And if you do, it's like one of those Chinese sweatshop knockoffs. So I wouldn't go for it. But the right. blue one you can find pretty much anywhere. It's pretty much always regular price unless you get one of those end of the season sales. But it's a nice looking jersey. I'll give it that. I think because most Ranger fans, you have to understand the tradition of the Ranger jersey and then they changed it. It was like, what the f? And uh, and they played so horribly in it uh, too, which didn't help. But as a jersey, it looks a lot like the old Winnipeg Jets jersey. You know, he took uh, he took that, and you know, John Ferguson, the GM there, he uh, that was his shtick, that color jersey. So I I thought it was okay. I liked it. There's a bad Chinese would... knockoff for you. <laughs> Is that, is that Justin? No. Oh. This is a guy. <laughs> this is a guy that used to be in our group, and he and he like and he he <laughs> he bought this Chinese jersey <laughs> that he swore he was gonna it. be it was gonna be the Winter Classic jersey, and like everybody poked fun at the jersey because you could tell it was just like it's all off kilter and everything. And he told everybody he told everybody in the group he was gonna he was gonna he was gonna kill himself. Because they're making fun of him. Why don't I just go kill myself? He said. And then he quit the group. But this <laughs> that, that face looks even fake. Is that a mask he's wearing? I don't know. No, that's his real that's his real uh oh, okay. There's so many things wrong. First of all, the logo wasn't even any bit correct for it. The patch was <laughs> if you look, no Ranger patch when they ever have one is in the shoulder. It's in the the front of it. They always put it on that shoulder, so that's wrong. I mean, I can and go into and see, he bought this before the Winter Classic jerseys were announced. Oh. And he thought and he thought when he bought it, he thought he was scooping everybody. That's an atrocity. Yeah, he's so he thought, you know, atrocity. I'm the first guy on my on my block with this jersey. Well, he's the uh, only yeah, he was. He he's was the only right. one on, on, on the on the block of Beijing, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> on the block That's of horrible. Hong Kong. That's horrible. Yeah. Oh. And what are those stars on the sleeve too? Yeah, it's 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 all bad. It's it's, it's all bad. China stars. <laughs> yeah, oh. there's nothing good oh, going God. on there. You make it mad physically ill by showing him that picture. Oh. Sorry, I, I'm a Jersey like geek to the point where I'll admit I get overworked about it. The thing I've been doing recently is on eBay, those Reebok Authentics, the legit ones that were like 300 bucks when they were out. I've been finding them on eBay with new with the tags for less than 50 bucks. So I have like three of the Heritage ones now, three of the white ones. Why spend $300 on the Adidas one that looks no different than the Reebok when you can buy new ones for less than you can buy a hoodie at Madison Square Garden, which is the biggest ripoff on the planet, but Wow. So let me ask you this. You're a Jersey geek. If you don't, like, other than the Rangers, what other team do you think has an awesome-looking jersey? Let me ask this to everybody. Uh, so the problem is so many teams change them up nowadays. I mean, the Detroit one is classic. Uh, the Chicago red one is classic. Um, Toronto, depending on which one it is, um, I'm not a fan of Vegas's at all. I find that thing the the L.A. Gretzky one I think is really cool, but it's all subjective. Certain people are gonna think ones are great and ones aren't. I don't, but I don't like the red in the Vegas jersey. I think those jerseys would be a lot nicer if they took the red out of them. Oh, we lost Matt. All right, well, good good talking to you, Matt. Yeah. Oh well, he brought up a good 
Whalers, Oilers. Nordiques. I, I, I like the, I like Black the Nordiques Hawks. jerseys. I think Black I'd Hawks probably, jerseys. I would be probably a Black Hawk fan if I wasn't a Ranger fan. The Black Vancouver ones, Daryl Bush says. Which is one of those? The 94, the ones they wore in 94 with the skate, the golden skate, I think they're called. Oh, those, yeah. Those oh, black ones. Pretty cool. They brought those back this year, I think. Wow. Anthony Riga, Frosty's here. He's wearing his Idiot Box t-shirt. What's up, Frosty? As representing. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. But uh, I think you should stick with the, the Hedberg. And there's not a lot of Hedberg jerseys. You don't see a lot of them. No. Especially now. All the old older people don't go to the games. It's all for people, tourists. <laughs> so. All right. Maybe we'll go with Hedberg. Oh, Matt's back. Let's see if we can get Matt back in here for a minute. Uh, what's sorry, up, Matt? boy. Yeah, sorry, boy. Right. got a call. Um, the other story I wanted to tell you guys, I went to a Knicks-Celtics game last month, and I actually met David Quinn outside of the garden. Oh, nice. So, Did he call you uh, Captain Happy? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is because he's from Boston – and coach there forever. He was actually rooting for the Celtics, which as a Celtic fan, I thought was pretty cool. And the fact that he didn't abandon his team he grew up with. But when I said hello to him, I actually wished him good luck because the next night was when they got killed by the Bruins. And his wife goes, are you being sarcastic wearing that jersey? And I said, no, the Knicks suck, so I can never root for him growing up. But boy, does he not dress well. When you make $5 million, you would think you would have yourself put together. <laughs> He was wearing like a light gray jacket with like these disgusting brown pants that didn't look tailored, didn't look fit. Oh, wait a minute. So if Al Troutwick can't get dental insurance from MSG, clearly MSG doesn't have a stylist budget outside of Henrik Lundqvist because he looked like a mess. Wow. Maybe Henrik's using up the styling, the stylist budget. Poor Quinny's got to shop at Old Navy. Quinn. He's a nice guy, though. I'll give him that. He's nice guy. Wow. Yeah. But, oh, but yeah. the budget for uh, the, the budget for style. Maybe he was trying to keep it low key. Maybe he was trying to like not be maybe known. like he would be noticed at a basketball game. Oh, I think I was the only person. And what's funny was my girlfriend and my dad didn't think it was him because they they thought he was that guy's a bum. No way that could be a Rangers coach. Is that what they thought? <laughs> but then when you look, and that haircut is terrible on him. Wait, wait, wait. What are you, what are you a fashionista? Ranger fashionista here? <laughs> Who are you, Joan Rivers? Yeah, really. What is this? Darren did to Mr. Blackwell? <laughs> he looks, I like his look. Matt Morello's top the 10 bench. best dress list. <laughs> what? What, what, do you gotta, what do you want him I to could do? do? Get one of those fancy, dancy, young cuts, young haircuts like you got. <laughs> He's got his hair oh, parted yeah. on the side. It's classic. It's Mad Men. Frosty said he shops at McCrory's. <laughs> <laughs> that is an old time story. <laughs> McCrory's. McCrory's. Wow. Well, you don't it's like the one. haircut? I like the hair. I think it looks uh, good. You know, the problem is, is when you're making five million, you would think you would have yourself like I I don't know. I would feel like if I had that, I would try looking dressed to the nines, but hey, at least he hasn't changed his style with all that money, so you gotta give him a What do you want, him all glammed up like A.V. used to come in, smelling good? Oh, no. You want him wearing the Paco Rabanne? What do you, what do you want I don't do? care if this guy dresses up as a homeless guy. Right. Just get us some wins. He could break out the Jean-Guy <laughs> Talbot tracksuit for all I care. Yeah. Just get us a cup. Yes. But I, uh, I, it, it is a good little uh, good inside information. That, the one uh, thing that's pissing me off about this team, and Ed, I think we talked about it maybe over the summer. I love how young they are, and I think the longer this team is together, it develops. But, man, too many offensive defensemen where when you play a team like Tampa when they uh, got destroyed or any of these high-profile teams with the exception of Washington, man, they are getting torched up because as great as it is to have guys who are going to pinch in and play offensively, you can't have four or five of them that are just not going to be defensively sound. Well, right now, without... Mark Stahl, yes, I said it. Mark Stahl, they only have one guy who really, I mean, an ex- experienced defensive that can play this, Truba. I mean, you know, these other guys a little bit, although I think Hayek is semi-responsible. The other guys, they, 
they look to jump in. The coaches and uh, they look for that now. Everybody's got to have some kind of uh, jumping into the play. But I, I agree with you. I think they'll get better as as time progresses. Right now, I can't find any fault with any of the young defensemen. Speaking of which, uh, I found out about this right before the um, Montreal game. Thomas Shabbat, the defenseman on the uh, Ottawa Senators, which we got housed by, absolutely ripped, I think, the, fired shots at the Rangers, at their defensemen. He said, basically, we throw the puck into their into their end because we know their defensemen are soft and don't like to get hit. Now, to me, coming from a guy named Thomas Shabbat, who's got like six career penalty minutes, next time I would have a long memory and I make sure I would throw the puck at his thing. And is that Thomas <laughs> Shabbat? What's, who's that? Is that David <laughs> Quinn? Jen said in the chat that Quinn should wear a blue leisure suit on the bench. <laughs> David Quinn in this picture? <laughs> That's what Matt saw. But uh, I was – I don't get <clears throat> that from the Rangers. Do you get that from the Rangers, what Shabbat said? That they're, mm -hmm. I mean, some of them suck. Like, Shea sucks. That you, Eddie, we talked about that too over the summer. That contract just – it's, don't get why they did it. It's proven to be one of the bigger albatrosses coming up. What are we rooting for with him? That Seattle's going to take him in that expansion draft, and that's not for another year or two. I think they're going to make him a forward. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying. I'd take all the bad defensive contracts and make them forwards. Mark Stahl on right wing. I have a whole line of them. Hey, it can't get. You have Haley who sucks, who's rolling out there all the time. You might as well have uh, forwards who can maybe do a little more offensively. I'm calling for it. Stall, Shea, and 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 Brendan Smith, the whole fourth line of them. Why not? But uh, yeah, it, it's interesting. That's definitely interesting, and in the whole take on the Rangers defenseman. I don't see the Rangers defenseman as soft. I, I think Ottawa just has their number for some reason. I, mean, I don't want to go back that too many games, but it just – it all falls apart. Well, Ottawa's playing much better than the team the Rangers beat in game two of the season, too. That's right. a, They're a much different team. All those fat Italian coaches they got behind the bench seem to be getting the job done. They got, they they got, got you know, six no foot neck Capuano. And they, <laughs> they got a six-foot-nine goalie there. Yeah. I mean, uh, they, yes, they're a little – they're much better, but – they look they like Jimmy two people. times as the head coach, and they got Fat Capuano back there, and that guy keeps getting the job, Capuano. You uh, would think man. with how bad he was with the Islanders that that kind of would have been the you, end of him, but you took about badly dressed. He was oh, badly dressed even behind the bench. It looks like he got like the used suits from Caraco. <laughs> <laughs> they never fit him well. His hair. He looked like I don't know what he looked. Well, like. he was on that Islander Red project. Flintstone. Chairman Charlie couldn't bring out all the young. Charlie. Chairman Charlie. Uh, chairman Wang. Very well. Good good memory there. Yes, the chairman. Uh, hey, the chairman's gone, right? He's uh, all yeah, right. he dropped dead. Yeah, yeah. he's dead. He's, he's dead. In terminal dreamland now. Yeah. Well, funny, he, he lives on forever at Stony Brook where he had the uh, – he has a building named after him for yes. all the Asian students who are uh, living there. Well, uh, yes. Big Wanger's building. Uh, listen, uh, he was a good man. He he was a man of vision. The lighthouse project or the fright house project. The outhouse, house. Project <laughs> the, outhouse the fright the house. house. <laughs> yeah, he wanted everything. Still waiting for that monorail to be built. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted everything, and he didn't want to pay for it. Right. right. Well, at least he had vision. Now they have nothing except they are winning, though the Islanders. How are you guys feeling about that? Is that bothering the shit out of you? You really don't care. The streak is over. But uh, at least the point streak came to an end last night. I mean, I got to deal with it out here because, I, I mean, being on Long Island, you get these people who pop up out of the woodworks with their porno stashes from the 80s, remembering <laughs> when they were relevant. So, <laughs> and then they got the jersey that's too small with the stains all over it because that's when it fit them in the 80s. But, you know, to, to, to me, it's annoying because – those people show up, and then the minute the season's over, they vanish into the dark. But That's exactly right. He's exactly right. Like, you'll get four mm -hmm. or five of them who are legitimate. Costa fans. just sent me this. Yep, that's on, the one. On eBay. 
Uh oh. 199 bucks. Oh, this, whoever this guy is, he's got a Greshner jersey for sale. He's got a he's got an Espo, all those vintage pajama jerseys. It's probably Paulie D. Check his <laughs> when he was Maybe modeling them. Kot- Kotze. <laughs> he's selling off his inventory. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that played to like zz top or something like that that montage video yeah. Yeah. could you see if yep. you can put that up because i need a i have a, a big belly laugh if we can put that up if you can find that man <laughs> all right I, I can't handle it all right I gotta, let me take my Oh, All right, I'll tell you what, Matt, we're going to let you go. I'm going to bring Costa in so we can talk to him, and I'll try and find this video. You'll still be watching, right? Yeah, I'll be here. All right, All right I'm going to try and find it. We'll talk to you soon. Later, boys. All right, bye. <laughs> here comes Costa. All right, let me look for this video. i got to see here. There he is. Yeah, there's Mr. Man, Mr. Pessimist. Uh, gloom and gloom, you know. uh, listen, it was all good fun. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I was like, I, I was just stunned. I'm like, how could you not be? Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I was happy. I was more stunned because this, how often this happened? Never. Very Every 20 years. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the first goal, every, if you, everybody, I bet you, any, everybody said, this is a bad omen. This ain't good. This is a very bad omen because it was like a fucking flu, absolute fluke goal, and then the friggin' and then just the 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 flood the the the, the 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 dam just broke and the and it just came in, and then those four those four broads that those four broads pretty much wiped out that bad juju. Yeah, they did. If they would have kept their fucking mouths shut, they would probably would have won the game. They would have won the game. It's true. This is my 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 conspiracy theory. No, I think if I was a, if I were with them, I'm saying you know, if you would have just shut up, we would have won the game. But you went up there and taunted those Ranger fans, and we collapsed. And but and, it was. And I said, and I keep saying, buy these girls a freaking fruit basket. Thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> you know. Well. So I mean, I yeah, I mean, I I mean. I was more just shocked than happy because this is the type of game we lose. We always lose these type of games. A certain kind of magic when we all get together. That's what happens. Yeah, a little, a little, a little fairy dust, you know. A little yeah, fairy dust. when we get the band back together, things happen. That video is gone from my YouTube. No! No! It should have been downloaded, Jim. Yeah, oh. it's well, it it's probably on an old computer. I don't even think it's on my laptop. I mean, that's like that's a long time ago. But I think YouTube took it down because I had the song in it. You know what I mean? They were always Uh-oh. looking for. I'm gonna look for it for the rest. Chris John and find that video. Right. So that's those were the those were the pajama jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. You? yeah. Yeah. Really? Okay. I learned some today. Okay. If you if you look oh, at it with the hockey oh. pants, it looks like they're wearing pajamas. In a way, oh, they were wearing the pants with that. Now, not, not yeah, the short. No, 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 no. Yeah, that that was the season. Oh, those, those, ugh. those yeah. are ugly. I don't know. It, it was, now, if the, when did when did JD retire? Eighty two or eighty three. Yeah, the, his knees were. Okay, you know. knees, okay. I, I I figured I you know what would be really cool the old New York with the, with the New York goes down and with the the double zeros. That would be really cool. That'd be really cool. A frozen. lot of people still scream for those New York jerseys. They really want the Rangers to wear them. And I would like that too. I I, I like the old school New York at home and Rangers on the road. That's how it used to be. I'm pretty no, sure. I think it was the other way around. No, it used to be the other way around. All right. They wore the white they wore the white Ranger at at home and the blue New York on the road. Yes. Uh that's what I meant to say, but I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I love to get one of those jerseys. Those jerseys are like like I just like those. This r- nice throwback, really nice. That's the only like really throwback one I would get. I agree with you. Don't you don't worry about Paulie D in this video. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, you know, you'll fuck that fucking guy. 
I may I may still have it on on my laptop. I don't know. I'll have to take a look. Yes, those New York jerseys were uh, were, were really good. So uh, and that wild game was a snooze fest. I felt like Jacques Lemaire was uh, coaching that wild team. It was so boring. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're right, Jim. The, the old players uh, just. How do you feel about Zook coming back? Me? Um, um, Were you emotional? Were you a big Zook guy? I don't remember or not. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I think he was for a long time the heart and soul of his team. The fact that he got what was he when he got like fucking was he on a was he did in a coma or some shit like that? Yeah, he got hit in the head. Yeah, yeah. Those, those, those were, remember that? Yeah, it was those guys. That's they scary. had the hologram. They had the hologram Zook up there in the press box. There's the jerseys, Ed. Uh, 1978 to 87. Ah. Uh, so, hmm. Yeah, I like that. I think New York, having New York on there is something that is something that is it's a little bit different. Right. Yeah, they tried to do it twice before once they had the those ugly heritage jerseys, yuck! I hated those fucking jerseys. Those ugly ass fucking blue ones with New York with the you know you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, those I hated those. Oh my god, I really liked the the one the, the, the one Eddie was wearing Saturday at yes. the viewing party. Hey, yes, he's, he's making fun of my jersey. Right, uh, the stadium series jerseys. I like those. I like those. What about the Liberty jerseys? Those are I, I like those too. I mean, too, I wish they would bring those back for like a season or two. I like the white ones better than the blue ones. Really? Why? I just thought they were nicer. Okay. I also like the the Winter Classic ones, the like the really old Ranger logo. You know, those were nice. So. Uh... The uh, Mika Zavinajad coming back. I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So now, so now, what's going to be the the lineups now? I don't think he's, he's not going back to one seed. Not not now. Keep him at two for now, and let him you know, or what? What what do you think should happen? You got tough opponents coming up. When they got Boston and Carolina, I don't know. I don't. I guess you got to throw them back in. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I haven't pondered the lineups. I'm still <laughs> trying to get the New York and Rangers jersey thing straight from 78 to 87. So I was pretty sure they wore New York at home, but apparently they were wearing New York on the road. Yes. So, but uh, yeah. Go ahead. I know. I'm just saying. I mean, uh, yeah. what about your thoughts uh, going forward, Coast? Did you enjoy the party? I. I, can't, how can you not enjoy the party? I was just, I was just like, just stunned, like that, that um, that they actually won that game. I, now, I, I, though, because, you have little faith. Yeah, have little faith. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take my beatings. I'll take. I'll eat my crow. I'll eat my humble pie. <laughs> uh, I wanted to. What was I, I was going to ask you something? Uh, oh yeah, where would you rate this? I know you like to rate all the parties and stuff like that. Where well, I, think was, I think this was like easily top three. Easily. Oh, wow. Because because it, like, like, it was like almost like a playoff, a playoff atmosphere. And you had the 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 the, the, the Canadian women come up for the taunting purposes. A lot of okay, the broads came up. The skirts came up. <laughs> oh, for real God's ears. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely. My thing actually worked. Surprise of surprises. It actually fucking worked when they scored a fucking goal. The goal like, light? Yeah, I'm like, oh, like, wow, it worked. It's let me cool. ask you this. Let me probe this. Uh, let me probe your brain for a second. Cool. You have a rally monkey. But when the Rangers needed a rally, you never utilized the monkey. Instead, you went into some despondent social criticism about everything. 
<laughs> what's the purpose of a rally monkey if you're not going to use the rally? You, sh monkey you should have been up. Baby. You should have been up dancing like rerun with that rally monkey, trying to excite the crowd. What's the purpose of a rally monkey if you? The guy who has the least faith in the building is holding the rally monkey. Right. Right. <laughs> Next time, let's see that rally monkey out. We'll put then we'll pass we'll pass it around, man. We'll pass it around, you know. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. All right. That's okay. All and right. my favorite part of the thing before Costa, we let him go. Was when Costa was calling those those French Canadian people, tell them, "Why don't you surrender? Why don't you surrender? One eight hundred, we surrender. One eight hundred, we surrender. We surrender." And then everybody goes, "They're French Canadian, they're not French." He's like, like "Same difference, difference. same difference. difference. It's just French, it's just French hillbillies. It goes, it just, That's all they are." And he goes, "Don't ruin my joke. Don't ruin my bit. Yeah, don't ruin my bit." That was the best. <laughs> That's great, man. One eight hundred surrender. One eight hundred. One eight hundred. We surrender. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I didn't get it correct. We surrender. In your little didactic uh, world. If I don't get anything right, but uh, it was funny. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, good people, and thank you for being such a making that thing so entertaining. Yes. Even thank though you Jim for was cringing and running up. away every five seconds. Every time you went nuts. <laughs> I was what? I was ready to throw myself off the balcony at, at your misery. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, <laughs> Except if, this, if, if I was at home, I would have turned the fucking thing off. Because I would I would have just been like, because you know me, I'm like I'm like a psychopath. When really <laughs> shocker! No, oh, come on now. Really, I, I didn't see any of that Saturday. You were so calm and cool. Why did you get there so late? You wanted to have this big contest about when you got there. You always get there early. We try to throw people off. What happened? Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Oh, he doesn't want to tell us. Uh, because I drove it from Queens. I didn't uh, because, like I said, um, he's trying to skew the betting lines for next time. <laughs> I left my house at four. I got. In Queen, to Queens at five. All right, I don't want to hear the whole thing, Fred Berry. <laughs> Sorry, Fred Berry, I don't want to hear the whole thing. There you are. That's how you should be when the Rangers are down. We'll get you the suspenders and everything. <laughs> you be doing there. If we kick it. <laughs> if you ever showed it up a viewing party dressed like that, I'll, I'll buy your meal. <laughs> I'll pay I got a hundred dollars straight up. <laughs> I will wear that. I'll wear like it like in like all Rangers uh the hat and the suspenders yeah, and the black and the blue hat <laughs> and the freaking the the, the the with the blue shit and with the with the with the suspenders. Oh, I'll do that. Yeah, kidding me? There he is, the late Fred Berry. <laughs> What's harpooning? <laughs> What's harpooning? <laughs> All, All right, right Costa. Take care, we'll talk man. to you next week. All right. Bye bye. Take it easy. Have a, have a bye bye. Evening. Have a blessed evening. Out he goes. Oh, Lord. Total comedy. I know some people can't stand them, but oh, God. Speaking of people you can't stand. Hello. <laughs> hey. How's it going, Jeff? What's up? <laughs> I'm trying to remember the Bubba Shampoo song because I was going to sing a lyric and give my own take, but I forgot. That's because Baba Shampoo. Uh, he tends the Rangers go. No. Uh, all right. Do, 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 do. In between modeling shoots, lead and bad, and bad goal. And play your fucking teammates because, because you think you're better than everyone else, but you're nothing. That's a cut move, Hendrick. Ah. Very good. Uh, medications? Did you take them today? And I have no idea what that was all about. Zero idea. Sorry, because you're, you're adding a new thing into. No, the Hendrick, no, because Hendrick on Friday was basically just throwing his teammates off the bus. Oh yes. And they lost to Ottawa. Well, yes. Well, he. That's what he does. The shampoo man. You're not gonna sing again, are you? No, he did it already. No, I'm not singing. So uh, I didn't get your uh, thoughts on the – this is non-Ranger related. 
but I figure you would have some cogent thoughts, I think, something semi-lucid about the firing of Mike Babcock from your beloved uh, Leafs. Should have done it after losing to Boston in the playoffs. Okay. Uh, what else? What else we got? Uh, I heard you and Jim are in a little bit of a tiff. Jim yep. said you couldn't do the videos anymore. What happened with this? I think it's just bad timing, I guess. Well, I think Jim feels that you're, you're using this venue for your every wacky idea you ever had. Well, well and, uh, and when he gives you a bit like the Hatless Potter bit with the <laughs> doing the trivia, the trivia, you won't do the trivia. You won't do it. No, because you guys didn't take it seriously enough. Seriously? How seriously do we want you to take it? You're we sitting in a basement somewhere. The wall is falling apart behind you. Shit's crooked on the walls. You got stains on the carpet. Your hair's a mess. I mean, you got your dollar store headphones. How fucking serious do you want me to take this? Who do you think you are? Edward R. Murrow over there? Oh, you're not taking me seriously. What the fucking Cronkite you are? You're not taking me seriously. That's the only Ranger trivia book I have. Like, um, I picked yeah, well, what the hell difference does it make? You would just read this all these questions from like 1932. Like, what, 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 what size boxer shorts did Foster Hewitt wear? We want oh. current questions. We got to keep people involved here. Don't worry, I'm going to set Cutsy up. I'm going to, I'm going to bridge this <laughs> rift between you guys. There's I'm no gonna rift. Send, I'm going to send him a wizard's hat. <laughs> Ranger trivia. Yeah, no. Now you will wear the wizard's hat, right? You're not gonna send anything to me. That's I, am. I don't give a shit. That's no, I am gonna send you a wizard's hat. Now you come on here and you're and you're questioning Eddie's integrity. That I Eddie will. says he's gonna send you something and you don't think and you don't you don't you don't think he'll do it. All right, listen. I am gonna send I'm gonna him gonna him. and I'm gonna send you some Rivia uh, Rangers trivia books. Okay. You're gonna go. You're gonna embrace this bit, like you will become famous for this. And mm. and I, and Jim, I'm famous for other stuff. No, you'll be famous for this. This is what. What else are you famous for? Huh? What are you? Is you some kind of internet sensation over well, there? The, no, in the no, in the BSU group, I'm famous for always being like being funny when I'm not supposed to be funny, and giving weird opinions when I'm not supposed to be. Well, stop, stop. That's called cool. infamous. That's not famous. That's the opposite. You want to be loved. Yeah. Yeah. Hairless Potter is a loved bit. People were Hairless. talking about it at the viewing party. Really? People yeah. were talking about they the loved, they, loved, they loved the trivia, Jeff. They loved it. Loved it. And you ruined it. Now, guys, don't fight now. No. You shat on it. Oh, we're not fighting. I would never fight with him. Yeah. Please. I will protect I him. Like I that, will protect but... him for as long as I can stand upright. I w I have protected him, and I will protect him. Have you? But he's got to. He's got to. He's got to understand that you know these recaps he's doing. I don't want him to do it, okay. and I have my reasons, and I explained it to him. I want him to come on and do the trivia. The trivia was fun. We had a good time with it. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. You just come on and do your thing and then let Eddie and I do what we do. We've been doing this 10 years. I think we know how to entertain people. Look, Jim, there are three things you never insult me about. A, my work ethic, that includes my trivia, my national pride, and my autism. I never make fun of your, uh, your autism. Yeah. Everything Good. else is fair you know, game. No, I know, but I'm just saying that. that if I ever said, oh, that you're <laughs> Those Canadians, they're dumb. I'd rather live in Canada than America. <laughs> That's how much of a patriot I am. Right. Oh, you and, you and Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, no, no, not, not because of that. I'm just, I like hockey. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. So those four broads were from Canada, right? Yeah, um, French Canadian. You know what I would have done to them? Uh oh. He, he, he just said broads. <laughs> what? What? That's legal. <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. What? Those four broads were from Canada. <laughs> All That's right. funny. Oh. Yes, they were from. They were. From <laughs> you know what I would have done with them? Uh oh. I would have 
killed them dressed up in their skin. <laughs> <laughs> what would you have done? No, no. I would have went have invited out. them back to your lair. Go ahead, go ahead, cut. I would have went all Georgie Porgy on them. You know what Georgie Porgy is, right? The nursery rhyme. Georgie, Georgie Porgy, Porgy, Porgy pudding pie, pie. Kiss the girl and made them cry. Georgie I Porgy. Pissed. You sure that isn't the story of Cutter's love life? Well, I would have kissed one of them on the lips and they would have been like, oh, fuck, let's get away from this guy and then run. Like hell, before I French kiss another one. I know how they feel. <laughs> I know I would make him feel like, you, get away from this guy. Go, go, shoot. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you would have scared them by. Uh, no, I would have. I would have French kissed one of them, and they would have ran Whoa, off. Whoa! Hey! Oh, it's oh, a G-rated show here. We don't talk <laughs> about that stuff. What? I'm only kidding. You're weird. Another, another, another yeah. first. So anyway, another first. <laughs> so I was watching the game on Saturday because I can watch. I could have. I wa I was able to watch the game on Saturday, and then. Jim made that comment when it was 4 nothing, saying that, oh, we're going to win. And I'm like, is he sarcastic or is he being genuine? And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my gosh, they're coming back. Jim might be right. And I said it when it was I said when it was 4-3. I said they weren't losing the game. Uh, I, I didn't look at the time stamp. Sorry. Yeah. It was 4-3 when I said it. That's I okay. also agree, agree with Anthony Rieger. <laughs> says that Cutter is timeless. Cutter looks like Wally Cox. <laughs> Check the old time references for that. Look, Google Wally Cox. Get a picture of Wally Cox up there. I know who he is, but where was he from? Like what? He was the voice. Was Wally Cox was the voice of Underdog, wasn't he? Yeah, he um he was oh, an okay. actor and he did a lot of voice uh work oh, the voice in for cartoons. God. Yeah. Yeah, I see yeah. him. Some, but okay. but like nobody under fifty gets that reference, unless maybe you do. You're you know quite a historian. No, I know, I know the name Wally Cox, but I didn't know what he was in. So. He was former coach of the Atlanta Braves. Oh, that's Bobby Cox. Shit, hold on. That's Bobby Cox. Yes. Uh, so yes, uh, yeah. So you got to do that trivia bit. We'll get you set. Uh, set you up. I'll. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you have any favorite Rangers this year, Cutter? Or if you. Uh, um. I know hmm. Der Derek Brassard used to be a, a big favorite. Yeah, of yours. Now he can go fuck himself. That's for sure. There's Wally Cox. Yeah, that does look like him. Yeah, I've seen a picture of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You think it looks like you? Um, possibly if I grow my hair out longer. Right. Well, you, you you can't do that, so. Uh, not completely. <laughs> yeah, it does look a little like. Uh, hmm. I mean, but yeah. Wally Cox has big glasses, though. Mm, I, mine are decent size. Yeah. All right. So anyway. Oh. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Why the hell are you calling my boy Josh Gimbel controversial? You're who? My boy Josh Gimbel. Why are you calling him controversial? What has he done? Uh, he sort of, I find myself, uh, I don't always agree with Josh. I feel like Josh uh, likes to be a little bit. Uh, anti uh, he likes to be contrarian he likes to take the opposite view but i will say he's been right lately he's been right on the money so i, I listen i like josh it's okay we're a lot to i was arguing with some ranger fans i was uh, pushing back so to speak ranger fans coming up to me with some crazy trades now i love brent spiegel this is meant that much as the rest of the guys, but when he says the Rangers should trade Kreider, Stahl, and I think he said Lundquist, who has a no movement clause, so that ain't gonna happen. For nothing to somebody, just so they can get him off the cap. Uh, and Stahl has a no movement clause too. Nobody's gonna take Kreider for nothing. I mean, why would you trade Kreider for nothing? Uh, it didn't make sense to me. Whatever he proposed, because he's very worried that the Rangers will not have enough cap space to uh, sign D'Angelo and or Brandon Lemieux next year. So he wants... But Kreider will be traded probably anyway. So you can... He, at this point, what are you doing with Kreider? Let me ask you two guys in front of me. 
Uh, Trade. Are you gonna, you're not going to think you can bring him back at a home discount? Uh, no. Not on pace for 40 goals here. No. Well, you're going to trade him? He's not taking a discount. This is his, This might be his last contract. He's not taking a discount to stay with the Rangers. Cutter, do you want to weigh in on this subject? Or you want to do some goofy video? No. No, I mean, like, haven't, hasn't this Facebook group want Kreider out for years? Right? Oh, yeah. Kreider has not been a favorite of the uh, of the Facebook group, but that's because he he's a very streaky player. That's that's the the component of all that kind of ill will, and the mm -hmm. fact that he he doesn't convert a lot. He mm -hmm. doesn't have the greatest hands in the world. True, true. But I mean, who would want a Chris Kreider? What team would actually? Well, benefit? you know. It, I think Kreider's value is a lot higher outside of the Rangers. Like the Ranger fans and the Ranger management knows what his ceiling is. But when you think of Chris Kreider, and I don't know how many goals he's going to wind up this year, but you, you go after last year having 28 goals. He's a big guy. He's a, he's a fast skater. I think he's got those in his resume, and I think you could get a, a pretty good haul for him if you're a team that needs one guy, mm -hmm. perception would be that you, this, this is a guy that really could put us over the top. The reality, uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, and, right. and, I, and I feel that Mark Stahl hasn't really been that well since Eric's hit on him years ago. Okay. That's true. Er, uh, Mark Stahl, the hit and the, the John Tortorella years definitely yeah. – uh, yep. wore down on him. Cut, I got to say, very good very good video call. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and more. Yeah, yeah, very good. And uh, not, not... <laughs> What? I had I had more to say, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're, we're, we're running out of time. Well, do you know Josh is going to have a baby girl? Yes. yes. Josh congratulations Gimble. Congratulations to, Gimble to Josh Gimbel's. To Gimbel's, the Gimbel's family of stores is going to have a, um, a, a baby. That's a great female, even better. You'll and be Uncle Cutsy. You'll be Uncle Cutsy. Yeah, right. Have Let's you been named Godfather yet? No, no, I've never. Are you gonna Are you gonna buy the Gimbel's a a baby present, a shower present? No. Oh, wow, uh, your well, good he, buddy. You, you did he just me, say he was his buddy? Yeah, now it's nothing. Now it's nothing. Get, you'll get nothing and like it now. You really are a cheapskate. Look, the point was that when I said controversial, it's like Josh is not controversial. I'm fucking controversial, and you stick it where it shines, BSU fans, because you're I, not you're you're not controversial. Uh, you're you're not controversial. Uh, you're, I am so. This is your. You want to be? The, who is the guy? Who is the guy that? Said that the Rangers had no good black players four years ago. That was me, and I lived to regret it. Yes, unfortunately, you lived to regret it. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Whatever. I'm done with you. Get him off my screen. Oh, briefly, I read down. Yeah, get more. Uh, more get more gear. All right. In your jets. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Goodbye, Cutter. And there he goes. Rangers don't have any good black players. Jesus. All right. Let's talk to Mike really quick, and then we're going to wrap this up. What's up, Mike? You could have just skipped me if you had really wanted to go. That's okay. I uh, we'd we say hello. Can we say yeah. hello and get your thoughts on the Rangers' uh, comeback victories? Well, I got to be honest. Uh, I didn't I was in and out most of the day uh, on Saturday. I didn't see much of the game. I was listening to it. I do like the comeback, the heart that they showed. And um, there's a couple of things I noticed last night. Um, first thing was the emotion from Buchnevich when he was just pissed. Can we lose him? Yeah. Well, we All knew right. where he was going. The right. whole captain, right. I guess he didn't see the captain happy. but Right. Sorry, Mike. We lost you. We'll talk to you next week, Mike. Yes. All right. Mike's calling from his dash, dash cam over there. Right from his, <laughs> from right. cigarette lighter. 
77 Pontiac. <laughs> Call- <laughs> <laughs> <77. laughs> Sean Sean McCaff said he's getting roadhead and calling in. That's <laughs> exactly ah, that. nice. Wow, he's getting service down calling us. All right. Well, Mike, we'll talk to you next week. We'll, yes, we'll try this again. All right. Anything else? Anything else, Robin? No, no. Two pick. This is gonna be tests coming up. Boston and Carolina. These teams are no joke. Nope. No joke, Robin. So you better freaking. Uh, we're gonna see if this team is uh, has got made a a little bit of uh, metal to them, so to speak. We'll see. All right, Jim. All right, cue the music. All right, thank you to everybody that called in. Thanks to all you guys showing up in the chat room. You're the best. We love you. Check out that link right under our faces there. If you want to support the show on Patreon, you can do so. We love you. Eddie, always a pleasure. Have a happy Thanksgiving, my friend. You too, to you and your family, the whole Blue Shirt Underground family. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, baby. All right. We will see you guys in a few days. (laughs) Let's go Rangers taking on Carolina tomorrow night and Boston on Black Friday. If you go out shopping on Black Friday, make sure you hold the camera phone sideways when you video those fights for us. People trampling each other for those $88 TVs. We love it. All right. We'll see you guys soon. We love you. Thanks for being here. Good night, everybody.